All right, welcome into the shop. Let's jump right into this build. We're gonna be building a bed for a 77 Argosy Airstream. Um, I'm providing plans for these. It's gonna be a two-part build. Uh, this is part one. We're building basically four boxes that make up the structure of the bed. This bed's gonna hold uh, the battery and power supply and then become storage. So we start off with the two front boxes of the bed, which are just straight boxes. The two back boxes will be the curve boxes. So there's four boxes total. I've already cut out the, the sides and the parts for these boxes and I'm using my Festool Domino um, to create uh, basically a joint uh, to glue these boxes together. This is all half inch birch plywood. The Domino strengthens it and makes it much easier to assemble the box. I'd be sure to use glue here because I want to make sure that I'm making this as strong as possible. Uh, it's going to be an RV. It's going to bounce down the road. So our construction needs to be strong and sound. I wouldn't want to just nail or screw this together without glue. So in this first part, you're mostly going to be catching just one of the boxes. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on the other box, but they both kind of go one and the same. There's not much of a difference other than size between the two boxes. Construction method is pretty much exactly the same. So I always glue these up on my workbench. I want a flat flat surface um, to register on so there's no twist in the box. Make sure I get it squared up and put clamps on, glue it up, and we're going to let this sit and we're going to work on uh, a frame to go in this box. So I'm using my mortar screw here. This is somewhat overkill. It's not really overkill, but most people don't have the luxury of this machine. So you could use a domino, you could use floating tenons. I would recommend putting some kind of joinery into the frame. Uh, this is what is going to hold the box to the trailer. Um, and it's basically going to sit on the floor inside the box. I'm opting to use the Morrison tenon joiner because it's the strongest way we can go and I obviously have the equipment and the, the know-how to do that. So I cut all my tenons over on my bandsaw. You, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know my process for mortise and tenoning. I just glue it together and clamp it and it'll make an incredibly strong frame uh, that's going to basically be the backbone of this box. It's going to create structure to it and it's going to hold it to the floor of the Airstream as we screw it down, once we install it. Now once the box is dry and comes out of the clamps, I'm going to start taking weight out of the box. Now this is all half inch birch as I mentioned earlier, and the idea with building for an RV is to make it as light as possible. So anywhere in this box that I don't really need a wall, um, I'm going to cut out some of the box and try to remove some weight. So what you see me cutting here is actually a drawer front opening. So there's gonna be a drawer here with two parts I just cut out. are gonna allow access for the install of the electrical. They're also obviously gonna lighten the box. And I'm gonna put a veneer panel over the front of this bed. So this is gonna be the front face of the bed. We're gonna cover all of this up. Um, so I'm just basically doing the best I can to take weight out of this box. Once I go through that process, I've got my frame out of the clamps. I'm going to fit it. I want a nice tight snug fit into the box and I just kind of lay it up there and mark it where it's tight and come with my hand plane and, and take a few passes and just kind of work it to fit into that opening of the box. Now I'm gonna glue this onto the box. It's gonna slide in, it's gonna glue. And I'm gonna put quite a few screws along the perimeter of the frame to hold it in place. Now this is kind of an afterthought. I'm kind of going, um, kind of figuring this out as I go how I want to build this box. So I ended up putting a vertical divider in here. So I just used a handsaw and cut out a section of my framing. Um, if I had planned this out ahead of time, I would have done a little bit different. But like I said, I just kind of was like, well, I'm going to put a divider here. Um, this is where my drawer is going to go inside this little box I'm creating within a box. And on the top of that box is going to sit my four lithium ion batteries. Now, if you build this bed, you can lay out the inside of the boxes however it fits your needs. If you're going to put electrical in here or if you're going to use it strictly as storage, um, that's the great thing about the design on this is you can basically tailor it to fit your needs. That back hole you see there is for the distribution box, which is going to house all my fuses and breakers and all that stuff.
Okay, so it's time to set this box. I got my dad to help me get it in the camper. My thought behind all the furniture I'm building for this RVC is to make it, in a, in a sense, modular. Not really, modular may be the wrong word, but I want to make it to where it can come apart if it needs to. I don't want to be nailing in two by fours and creating a structure that is really hard to uh, do any work on or, or remove and get to things. So um, each component builds the bed and each component can be taken out and the whole bed could be removed in the future. Um, it would be a little bit complicated being that it's full of electronics, but it could be done. Real quick, I want to tell you about Hawthorne who is sponsoring this video. Now they are a premium tailored personal care brand that's making it easy for guys to feel and smell great. Now Hawthorne tailors their products to you. So you go onto their website, you fill out a quiz. It asks you questions like what type of hair you have, do you have dry skin, do you sweat a lot? All these things are questions that you answer and then it tailors the products personally to your needs, which I think is super cool. Once it populates all your results, you can go through, look at everything, select what you want to put in your car. You can also look and see what the ingredients are in all the products. You get a lot of information, which I really appreciate because, you know, there's some things I try to stay away from. Now, being a woodworker and working in a shop, especially in the winter when we have dry winter months and the sawdust just drives me out, my hands just get so dry. This is one of my favorite products. This is their hand cream, keeps my hands moisturized. Um, it keeps them from drying out and cracking. Literally, my hands will crack and bleed it's not fun. Hawthorne also provides free shipping and returns. So if you don't like the products they sent, you can send them back and they will retailer new products to your needs. Now we're rolling into the holiday season and Hawthorne would make a great gift. There's special offers going on now for the holiday season at Hawthorne.co. That's Hawthorne.co. Make sure to head over, get yourself something nice for Christmas. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Thank you so much to Hawthorne for sponsoring the video. Thank you for making me smell so nice. Much appreciated. Let's get back to this build. Okay, so back at it. Now, I was telling you a little bit about the two boxes before we went into our sponsorship. The one on the right actually sits next to an exterior hatch, so you access that from the outside. I need a shroud to build to close the gap from the edge of the box to the wall, and that's what I'm working on here. Now, to speak of that gap real quick, I left a three inch gap around the whole wall perimeter to the boxes. This allows me to run power, piping, anything I need between the wall and the bed. So this little shroud has a bit of a taper to it and that matches the taper of the wall because the Airstream wall kind of curves and gets wider and then gets smaller at the top. So I've got to kind of, I'm not going to curve the box, but I am going to taper it to try to wedge it in between um, the boxes I've just built and the wall of the camper. So I cut that taper out on the bandsaw. I just clean my um, edges up with a hand plane. You could use a sander, um, a joiner. There's multiple ways to do this. I just like to pull out the hand planes and use those. It's not a big deal to use hand planes on plywood. I promise you they'll be okay. Again, I use dominoes in this. I want to make it as strong as possible. Those little floating tendons uh, will really help strengthen it and putting some glue on it. It's very unlikely that this thing will ever break apart. Okay, so while that's drying, we're actually going to set this box in place. You can see on the left there, my dad has already started working on the distribution panel in the other box we set, getting it wired in. It's great to have the help of my dad. Much appreciated. He's a rock star on this build. So basically, I can screw these two boxes together. I built the exact same frame that I built on the bottom of the other box on this box, so then I can screw it down to the floor. Once I have that set, uh, we'll kind of install that shroud. You can see the gap now between the wall and the box right there. Shroud just slides in, wedges in place. I was very fortunate that this worked out on the first try. I was expecting to do some trial fitting on it, but it actually fit in there quite nicely on the first go, which is, which is a good deal. So when you access this from the outside, now you can't drop things down in that three inch gap and lose things in there, and you don't have to worry about any of that. It's a clean, a passageway into the storage of your box here where I can put things like uh, cables and tools or whatever I need in the camper that I want to access from the outside. I want to speak real quick on the frames I made for the bottom of those boxes. Everything that's framed out that needs solid wood, I use Cypress. It's a very strong sturdy wood. It's very rot resistant and it's incredibly lightweight. Perfect wood for RV application. 
Um, and that's what I used for all the framing out in these boxes and probably what I'll use for a lot of the material in the RV. The only downside to Cypress is it's very soft so it dents easily. That's the trade-off you have to live with. Okay, so now we move on to the two back boxes. Now these are gonna be curved. We have a curved back wall on these. I gotta match the curve of the trailer. And um, I did this because when you open the box and you have storage in there, I wanted it to be nice clean plywood walls in there and not the Airstream walls. Not a super complicated process once you figure this out. It takes some trial and error for me especially. I haven't done a lot of curve bending, but I'm doing a lot in this camper and I'm learning a lot about it. Basically here, I uh, figure out where I need to start my curve, set my fence, make my passes. I'm kicking the fence over about five eighths every pass. And you know, you're, the height, you, you just have to test it with your material on how, how high you have to cut. If you don't cut high enough, it's not gonna bend well. If you cut too high, then you make it pretty fragile. So there's kind of a sweet spot you have to find through trial and error. You can see it starts to get a little wobbly as it hangs off the saw, so I got my stand there. Uh, without the stand, this stuff would just collapse. I mean, it's basically just wiggle board at this point. All right, so um, I'm going to assemble it. I've already made the two other walls. I know those measurements based off measuring in the Argosy and the camper, obviously. You can see I'm over letting my side, the curve part overlay the side a little bit um, just to make it easier for me. I can cut that off after the fact. Uh, it really is pretty nice at how well it bends. Now, the deal with this is the way it is now, it's completely, it has no structure. So I couldn't put it in the camper like this. It would just break or fall apart. I'm going to go ahead and glue this box together and get it where I want it. And then what we've got to do is make two ribs that will glue to that curved section and create the curve we want and give it some structure and some strength. Um, that part's going to be a little tricky. We're going to start that here real soon once we get this glued up. Okay, so the first step in making the ribs is scribing a jig off the curve of the trailer. I've made this little scribing disc. It's basically a six, uh, I think we're about seven inch diameter disc. That gives me a three and a half inch radius, um, which is about what I need for that rib because we're gonna glue it on the back side of that box and the box is a half inch thick. And then that leaves three inches of space between the boxes and the wall to run my plumbing and, and wiring and anything I need to run through there. Really an effective way to scribe curve works really well fortunate for me i have this big giant bandsaw uh, with a three foot by three foot table so i can easily come over here and cut out that curve i don't need to worry about being super perfect and clean here because it's we're not matching anything we're not trying to go flush against the wall since we're stepping in three inches it doesn't have to be some perfect match so i just want to get a nice clean cut do a little bit of sanding on it and uh, then we can go from there before I go to the sander, I'm going to measure back. I think I go about four inches here um, and just scribe a line uh, that make an inside radius for this jig. Uh, and then I cut it out on the bandsaw as well. Basically, I'll make this jig and then um, cut all my ribs using this jig in a, in a bearing bit on my router. If you don't have a bandsaw like I do, which probably most of you don't, you can use a jigsaw to cut this just as easily. Now before I'm ready to use the jig, uh, the bottom frame, just like we did on those front boxes, is gonna be made out of cypress. And it's a little bit tricky when you go in the solid. So I have to lay it out of three pieces and miter it up so that that solid wood kind of curves around and matches the jig. I can lay the jig on there, trace this out now. It's important that you trace it on before you glue this together because I wanna put dominoes in these joints and strengthen them up as well. So if I trace it, I know exactly where that jig's gonna hit at each joint, and then I can lay out for my dominoes. This is a very similar process you would use for making an arch casing on a door uh, or trim on an arch door opening of some kind. I did this for years in a door shop I worked at. Uh, it's really not a hard process. Once you have your jig made, you just have to lay out your pieces on your jig and get the angles cut right and then glue it together.
And you can see how those clamps kind of suck it together. And then I put one long one across the whole length of it to pull the inside uh, joints to inside miters together. So for the top ribs, I'm just going to use MDF. Um, it's going to be out of the way. It's not going to be seen. It's very unlikely it'll ever get wet because it's up high. And I bought a 4 by 8 sheet of MDF to make all these jigs. So why not just use that as my uh, rib material for the top? So this is basically how it is. You just put some glue on it and use a whole bunch of clamps and, and just run, run around it and clamp it together. And once that dries and you have one of those on the top and the bottom, it really stiffens and strengthens the box. It makes the uh, kerf area much stronger having the ribs in there. So this is dried out of the clamps, put the jig on it, lay it out. Uh, one thing, if you are, you know, here it really doesn't matter, but you do want to make sure that you kind of remember how you had it laid out because there is a small possibility that you could cut through a domino if you get off. You'd have to get off a lot. Uh, so if you're making, if you are actually making casing for a door or anything like that, that would ruin the piece if you cut through the domino. In this instance, since it's for the base of an Airstream box in the back of the Airstream, I'm not too worried about it, although it doesn't, although I'm not going to cut through the domino because I know where I put it. All right, so I get to use the big saw again. Love this saw. Cut out the curve on both sides. We're just rough cutting it at this point, not cutting to the line. And then we'll use our jig with a router and clean up these saw marks. That was a little sketchy there. All right, so I just have a top bearing bit. I simply just screw the jig onto the piece of wood. I don't really worry about the screw holes at all. It makes it a lot easier. It's a little tricky holding the router on a smaller space, but if you just are aware of it and careful where you're putting the pressure, it's not an issue. I use this, this jig is exactly what I want the rib to be. So I go around the whole jig, ends and all, on the inside as well, and just copy it exactly and do this. I basically do this four times, so we have four ribs. On the cypress, it's a little thicker down there. I think I used it, you know, the, it's an inch thick, so it uh, didn't quite cut all the way through, which is okay because you don't, you know, you obviously don't want to cut through into your workbench. So I can take the jig off now, flip it upside down, run it on my router table using a bearing bit, and clean off that last bit. And you can see the boxes there uh, kind of coming together. Now, I can tell you this is a bit overkill to use solid wood here. Um, you could get away with using plywood. I, I love the idea of having the cypress down there. I like the way it looks when you look inside the box. It's really just for myself because I just, you know, I, it would drive me nuts if, for one, I used MDF and it got wet and ruined. I don't want to look at plywood when I open the boxes. So I just it's nice to have this nice looking wood down here that looks clean and well put together. Okay, last step is the install. Now there was a lot of modifications I had to make to the box to get to fit because we have all those wires coming in from the back. Uh, distribution box right there where it heats, hits up. So I had to basically cut the bottom corner out of the box. Um, once it's set on the ground, I can screw it down where we put that rib in and then I can screw it to the other boxes and it all gets captured and uh, stuck together really well. The great thing about it is I'll have a large storage space in the back to store quite a bit of stuff. So it's a really good use of this space. Uh, and, I, and I think it was worth the extra time making it nice and clean and having it all closed in so you don't lose anything or nothing's falling out against the wall. It's all in one tight space. So I want to take you through a quick walkthrough. I hope you've enjoyed the build. Uh, this is basically the four boxes all done. Obviously, we've got the electrical all installed as well. This front panel here is all going to be a beautiful veneered panel. It's not, obviously that's the raw rough face. I don't know exactly what veneer I'm going to use yet, but I'm thinking a sinker cypress. We've got our pipes already running through our three inch gap all the way around 
the trailer that was purposely put there obviously to run wires and pipes um, which I think is a pretty good way to build it the back boxes um, this one here has all of the electrical coming in so our distribution box is there and then we built this little box to hide it so all my wires are back down in there hidden that's a pretty ugly mistake we won't talk about that made a little mistake on that so that goes on top hides that all of this in here is storage which will be accessed through a hatch we'll build in part two same on this side a big giant storage space access through a hatch this here will be a short shallow drawer it pulls out you know maybe five or six inches so if you're sleeping up here and laying up here you can open this section up and store stuff in here and then obviously below that we've got our cool little outdoor um, storage space that you access from the hatch right there so in our next video what we're going to be doing is scribing a really nice uh, frame to go right to the wall and then it'll have hatch access i'll show you how you make those a really clean simple way to make those hatch access here as well might as well open this up and maybe have a little hidden storage back in there and then this is a fold up door here that you will be able to access all your electronics now i know you're thinking there's a mattress on top that's going to be in your way it will a little bit but the mattress is designed to have a hinge it's a custom mattress right along here so i'll be able to pick this up fold the mattress over access all this or crawl up pick up and fold the mattress from the back side and access that so that is a quick rundown of what we've got so far hope you enjoyed the video remember there will be digital plans of this I'm not quite sure if they're there yet. You can check the description, but they definitely will be there for part two. Part two, we're going to be making that frame, attaching it, showing how I bolt it to where I can take it on and off, making it all uh, somewhat removable. So stay tuned for that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.